Sarah from 17 once again, introducing you to my Devil May Cry, Dante Must Die difficulty, video walkthrough. This is mission 15, the Wheel of Destiny. Not to be confused with the Pick of Destiny, which I didn't think was that bad. Uh, a lot of my friends really hated that film, but I watched it and I felt it was daft enough to be enjoyable. Don't get me wrong, I was well out of the Tenacious D phase at that point because they only made one album and half the songs and it were fucking dog shit. But the Wheel of Destiny anyhow, this is an interesting mission because we're going to be doing a couple of trials and then we're going to be taking on Griffin for the third and final time. And this area here is really dangerous and I never really thought it was until I think this recording. I took advantage of these fetishes and they kicked my ass. They, Yeah, this is it, this is it. No, 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 maybe not. You see, I, I, I cottoned on to what was happening right there because if you get trapped in that puppet string attack that they just did, this is it, I think. I allow him to devil trigger because I'm using a shotgun. Yeah, that's my mistake here, people. If you're wondering what I'm doing wrong, I'm using a shotgun. Grenade launcher is the only gun you really want to go near because it just doesn't stun enough. That's why I'm doing devil triggered stingers because I know I'm in trouble right now because this guy's devil triggered and he's, he's really strong. He's got loads of life and there's more than one fetish in this room. And if I attract a bunch, look at this bullshit, look at this. This is what you want to avoid. This is why you never let things devil trigger. Devil trigger and they're spawning in. It's like I'm currently in my room when I was playing this. You can imagine how I was feeling at this moment in time. I just, my mouth is agape. It's one of those like motherfucker moments. So instead I go into Gerard Butler mode. I start, this is spartering everybody. And luckily enough, I think I pull it back. I say I think I pull it back, it wouldn't be in the video if I didn't pull it back. But that is what happens if you let the enemies get any kind of advantage. Never ever give them any small mercies or that will happen. And it happens to all of us, we all get careless, it's just one of those things. But that is why you've not seen me messing about with the enemies on this difficulty. Because you just cannot afford to. Unless you play this game far too much. But keep on progressing forwards, back into the bullshit room. And look at this. How fun is this room? Like, if you told people, if you even phrased this in a production meeting nowadays, people would be like, where exactly does this add to the game and make it anything that re remotely resembles fun? And it, it'd probably be in a From Software meeting and it'd get entered into the game in every section of the game before a save point and a bonfire. But in every other game, with a brain and a sense of, you know, fucking pride, or even a sense of mercy, it wouldn't be in it. I mean, look at this shit. Like, ideally, you should probably try and kill this guy in this very small environment and then do the jumping sections. But I just thought balls to that and I just did what I just did then. But skip this room. There's no point fighting them again unless you're actually looking for orbs. I thought there was a fetish up here and there's not. I think he's up on the opposite side of this area. If this is your first time through this area, you can get the Nightmare Beta from doing both sides of this challenge area of the Colosseum. And uh, this is another one of the Scythes, the, the Death Scythe character. Which, with the looks of it, I'm actually going to never fight him in this room. I don't even know why I'm doing this. Look, I mean, look, you should never ever fight an enemy on their terms. It's just not cool. And you'll get your ass slapped. And, I mean, some people like that, but on a game, less so. That's the fetish I was looking for in the previous room. That's the reason why I tried to kill him as well, because you'll notice the fetishes sometimes, especially uh, if you've not realised, but when you're low on life on this game, there is a percentage that they will drop a healing item. And a lot of the times, if it's a big drop, it's going to be a full heal. And that's always what you want to be trying to go for whenever you're low on life and you want to get your life back, because... I am part of the philosophy that says you can do all of these games without being hit. It's just extremely difficult to do that and it's a, a, a showcase of pure mastery that I don't quite have. But at the same time, it is always nice to have that blanket, to have that cushion of, of a nice life bar behind you. You don't have to go to this room once you've been to one of them because all you need is the Wheel of Destiny, then you can enter the Colosseum. But the reason I'm coming here is because I wanted to make sure I was picking up the items. And if anybody's going to be doing the item spam to get through Dante Must Die, you're going to be doing this a lot. Because when you come back through these rooms, there's going to be holy waters, there's going to be untouchables and things that you found the first time through. And they're the items that you're going to be farming. 
because obviously the more of those that you have, the easier this difficulty will be. But there's the door, there's the lances that are needed for it, and then once you enter this, uh, this is your next boss arena. And if you didn't, you know, get the impression that this was a boss arena, you haven't played enough games. Because giant circle, open space with nothing in it, screams boss fight. And lo and behold, here we have it. So Griffin's a pussy, believe it or not. He's a big, big pussy. And I say this because Meteor does so much damage to him. He can hurt you, he can kill you, and he is quite lethal when he wants to be. But for the most, it's pretty damn simple. You just need to be aware that that electricity stuff is annoying as shit. The camera is annoying as shit. As soon as you're knocking down, though, this is when the fight really begins, and this is when you have to start actually playing. So... Griffin's gonna charge you. Oh, he's gonna do that move, which is a massive electricity bullshit thing. Yeah, do not stand anywhere near him. And what he's gonna do is, after that cavalcade of lightning, one strand's gonna come for you, and all you need to do is keep walking sideways, and then do a roll as it approaches you to evade him. What he'll do then is he'll roar and he'll charge you. Once he charges, time your jump, and then get some free attacks off on him. Move back into position and hit him with another meteor. All you want to be doing is charging your Devil Trigger so you can hit him with Meteor. The Grenade Launcher is fantastic for it. Taunting is also very good. Just watch out for that move. Time your jump so he doesn't hurt you. And just rinse and repeat. This boss is easy, folks. It's just... It's intimidating as hell. And because it's this difficulty, any one move can do enough damage to really knock your confidence. But there we go. As soon as you stun him, this is when you really need to capitalise. So get super close. You can do Infernos if you want to. You can charge Meteors if you want to. I didn't really have any Devil Trigger to do anything really damaging. But it doesn't matter. Because I've fought this guy. He's going to do his Lightning now. So back up. Watch for the Lightning. See the one that comes towards you and roll. There you go. It's followed by another one. But the second one usually always misses because it's slightly off. Oh, wow. I suppose it all depends on if the first one hits you, because it might knock you into the second one. But the, the key to damaging Griffin is to really get the fully charged Meteor to go through him. Because if you can hit more than one hitbox, you'll do massive, massive damage. Uh, occasionally you'll do fuck all, because it'll miss or it'll go through him and it won't hit any of his vitals. But it's all about patience, it's all about practice and technique. And when you beat him, you can say that you've done it, and you've done it on the hardest setting, and it's a nice little pat on your back. Just don't get greedy, because uh, I myself get caught all the time trying to get an extra move in when his life's low to try and finish him off, because I go back into that childhood mentality of, you know, just bashing attack and trying to win and hoping I don't die and holding my breath. And sometimes it doesn't work, so just be really aware that the more patience you have in these fights, the easier they will be. And if anybody's seen Tremors, Griffin's face really reminds me of the Graboids which were the, the creatures that are underground, if you've never seen the movie. Really good, cheesy horror film. Just absolute classic. Really self-aware, but awesome at the same time. But then you've done that. Come down into this room, run forward towards the item, and it's the end of the mission. Pick that bad boy up. Jobs are good. So thanks for watching, guys, and you take care now.